Hey everybody, welcome back to Retro Tech. I am Steve, and I hope you are ready to be uh, entertained with the art of CRT calibration. So today I have the Sony PVM 1353MD unit that in a prior video I recapped the power board and it also got a geometry cap kit installed in it. And then now I had it pieced back together and today we're going in and doing some final adjustments on it and really getting it tweaked in. The first things I wanna do is just show you the overall condition of the screen, but I wanna get it a little bit sized up to uh, actually start calibrating. And that's one of the first things I'll do. And that generally means sizing up the vertical size and the horizontal size so that majority of the picture is actually visible. So one of the first things I have to start with here is this yoke assembly, okay? Because you can see how on that grid pattern that I pulled up on the 240p test suite, the screen was tilted a little bit. Now that's a pretty common problem. So you can do what I'm doing right here. Uh, either a little bit or to this extreme, which is pretty much an entire reseating of this yoke on the tube. So I'm loosening that screw that you saw, and then I gently twist and pull back on the entire yoke assembly till it breaks free. And I like to go in and just reseat it against the back of the tube. And then I can position it carefully against the tube and tighten the screw a little bit. Now there's one thing I need to mention. This whole entire process I just did was with the tube turned off. I didn't actually show that in the video, but just so you know, when I went in and really manhandled that yoke, it was with the CRT powered down. It was not powered on because right now I'm going and I have it pretty set in a good starting position. And then see, I, I'm turning the tube back on after I tighten that screw a little bit. It's just slightly tightened. It's not completely over-tightened because you can see I still need to adjust my yoke a little bit more. So when you have your yoke assembly loosened a little bit, you can start making this type of an adjustment to make sure that the screen is set straight. So I'm doing a pretty drastic swing back and forth of the yoke here. And then you can see it has a drastic effect on the screen but once you get it mostly set then you can just adjust it a little bit at a time and try to make that horizontal picture on the top of your screen right there next to the bezel make it even and parallel along that top line and uh, just twist the yoke back and forth a little bit till you get set in the right position and finally go and push it all the way up against the back of the tube and, and just tweak it in with those final little twists. And once you get it set to the spot you like, you could go back and go back to the yoke and then apply a, uh, you know, go back and tighten that screw so that the uh, yoke won't move again. Because what you want to do is you just want to get it set and at the same time make sure that it doesn't move again. So the next portion of controls we're going to discuss are on the back of the neck board now for the 1353. And so if we look in here under here, we've got a couple potentiometers and this is a pretty hot spot to get into or a hard spot. I say uh, this first knob you can't see it's in black. It's the focus adjustment potentiometer. Now I'll tag to a video I've done that greatly describes how to adjust focus um, and it's very short so i'll tag it right here in the video if you want to check that out and come back you can but uh, there's another spot on here we're more concerned with and that is this white potentiometer next to the uh, focus adjustment and that's our horizontal static convergence adjustment and we're going to need to make an adjustment with that uh, to make sure that our convergence is parallel lined up horizontally. We'll have to do other convergence tests and checks and also adjustments, but this one is definitely the easiest convergence adjustment to make. And uh, we'll sh I'll show you a little bit more on how that works on a video or in the video today, but I've also done another video on that that will be tagged in this video. 
Now, if we look at the back of this neck board, there are two potentiometers down in this area that we're going to take a quick look at. This other one, it says focus again because it's the back of that same potentiometer that you couldn't see. And you can adjust that one for focus if your screen looks blurry at all. We will adjust that one today. But we're not going to adjust this one, which is, says it's labeled screen. This is your uh, voltage going into your screen. So unless your screen is extremely dim and uh, you can't get it any brighter using the brightness knobs, then you can go in here and try to turn this up a little bit. Or if you have too much brightness, you may have to turn that down a little bit. All right, so I told you the first thing we're going to get in here and adjust is this horizontal static convergence potentiometer. Now, it's a little tricky to get in there and adjust it, but you'll notice it separates the red, green, and blue lines horizontally on that checkerboard. And then we're also going to be adjusting the focus, which I'm just trying to look at these dots and make sure that they are just as in focus as possible while I turn that potentiometer using a screwdriver, okay? So those are the two adjustments on the back of the neck board that uh, you'll most likely be working on. Now, what I'm using here is a convergence lens. And again, I've done a video detail in this lens, so if you want more details on it specifically, I'll tag that video. But this lens allows me to check the convergence of each beam vertically and I could see how far each beam is off vertically because that's the real challenge is getting the beam to line up vertically. Uh, you don't have a nice potentiometer like you do with the horizontal, uh, or horizontal convergence adjustment. You have to go in and adjust these using rings. And this tool is very helpful because you can check each area of the screen. You can't just check one spot of the screen. You have to look at every area on your screen and make sure that you're you know evenly distributing those beams and uh, one isn't more converged than the other so here's the area that we have to unfortunately <laughs> go after and attack to do this adjustment right now for convergence and that are these rings so i'm going to break down these six rings and there's broken up into three sets of two and i'll explain what each one does so the first two rings I have circled here are purity rings. These do not affect your convergence. So if you only have a convergence problem and your purity is, there's no problems with your purity, meaning that you don't have any uh, odd discoloration in areas of your screen, then you don't need to adjust these first two rings. You'll only be concerned with the back four rings, each with a set of two. So those are the purity rings, and the second middle set is um, our red versus blue rings. And I've got it circled down here because that ring is barely, barely visible down there, and this one's uh, up here. And then I've got the third two rings, which is the closest one to the neck board. That's green versus magenta, which magenta is just the mix of our red and blue. So I'll show you here real quick how to actually adjust these rings. And I'll have some more graphics pop up on the screen uh, to, to help explain this more because you have to actually move the rings. First way to do it would be to push the rings together. And that's literally pushing the space between them closer together. Or opposite of that you actually pull the rings apart a little bit and make a larger distance between the rings now when i say the rings i just mean the ring set so just the two rings on whatever ring set you're working on either the first set or the second set and then the third uh, part of that adjustment is to actually just spin the whole set of rings around the uh, yoke assembly and just turn it and see how that reaction or what re, uh, a reaction that has on your screen and i've got my screen showed in a little bit of a fast motion here but just shows you how tedious it is to kind of go back and forth you've got to constantly check each side of the screen and go and uh, turn each one of those uh, little rings 
you know, a little bit, see what happens. A little bit more, see what happens. A little bit more, see what happens. Sometimes you have to go back and forth a little bit. So it's a very detailed and, uh, as you can see, tedious job. And I think that's the reason most people avoid it. Uh, but this one really needed it because there was just some bad convergence in some of these corners. And this is about, you know, 30 minutes later, I've finished up for the most part. Uh, now, I have not started with the geometry yet. This is just that convergence and yoke setup that we've got. Now that it's in place, though, I'm going through right now and I'm applying a light, uh, high temperature epoxy. And it's just a two part or a caulk. I'm sorry, it's not even an epoxy, it's a caulk. I started using this caulk because it doesn't, uh, it's easier to pull off if I need to again, but it's also durable and good enough and safe to be in use here as a replacement for the original stuff. And it'll keep the neck board from moving and it'll keep those rings in place. Sometimes they'll want to shift around so you don't want them to move again after you spend all that time, uh, you know, setting them in place. So that caulk takes a couple hours to harden and set up, but now I'll go back and just give it a tap and it's pretty well dried now. And I can now go back and turn the monitor back on and start doing the geometry adjustments to it. And so to do geometry adjustments, I recommend that you get your monitor nice and warmed up. And it just means you get it started, let it go for, you know, 30 minutes before you start making any of these configuration adjustments. However, I do, um, you know, I'm going to show you a little bit of my footage here again in fast motion of me I'm making adjustments on this monitor, but I do have a detailed video. One of the ones I again will card or tag right here that is telling you exactly how to get in and do these uh, specific adjustments on this monitor in the G in the sub menu. It tells you how to get in there and how to make all the adjustments. But after a couple of, uh, you know, hard hours of work on making adjustments and setting up this screen, you could tell how just, I mean, it's in really great shape now. Uh, after everything that's been done to it, it's got, um, I, I mean, it's, it's almost complete, I say, because I still have to go on and put the shell and recheck the calibrations after that and, and let it run for a while and test. But this is, you know, the kind of ex results you could expect to get after you do a lot of this work, do it right. Uh, the cap kit helps because uh, you don't have to worry about any of these values changing over time or not being set right. This is one of the last uh, test patterns or, you know, the tests that I like to run, and that's a scroll test. It's in the 240p test suite, and uh, it lets you scroll back and forth, and you can see if you have any like wonkiness in your screen or linearity issues. So that's pretty much well it for this monitor. I mean, it's been cleaned, everything's nicely adjusted. The last thing it needs to do is just have the shell uh, reinstalled, and then just remember that it, you have the six screws on the outside of the shell and then the four screws on the back. And then the very last thing I do is I go in and uh, hit, a, hit the monitor with a nice RetroTech sticker since it's, it has been, um, you know, given a good, decent amount of restoration. That way, whoever has it next will know that it's been well taken care of and that it has had some capacity replacements and had a full gamut of adjustments done and completed. So that's the process for going through and future proofing your Sony PVM or any real CRT display that you're worried about having uh, and having it work for a long time. That's the way to do it. And um, I just wanted to say if there's anything that Anybody who watches this was to add in the comments below and say, you know, if you have anything else that you'd like to add to maybe this process and uh, either that or have me go through more in depth next time, or maybe there's something I can even add to this to make it an even better process. I'm well open to discussion on that. So please leave a comment. Thanks again for watching today and have a great week. And I'll see you guys next time with some more retro content.